We would now like to invite Petronas to share a little more about their plans for the Kasawari CCS project, billed as one of the world's largest. For that, we invite Puan Norain Muhammad Saleh, Head of Carbon and Storage, to take us on a little journey into Kasawari and how it will support our national energy transition roadmap. Puan Norain, dipersilakan. Assalamualaikum and uh, good afternoon. Yang berhormat uh, Rafiz Ramli, Minister of Economy. Yang berhormat Nik Nazmi Nik Ahmad, Minister of Natural Resources, Environment and Climate Change. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Petronas, thank you for giving us the opportunity to share about Kasawari Carbon Capture and Storage project this momentous afternoon. Before we dwell into Kasawari project itself, allow me to share why CCS is important and critical in the energy transition era as well as the net zero and the climate change plan. Globally, CCS has been recognized as one of the solutions toward decarbonization, net zero aim for the achievement of 1.5 degree C target. This is because CCLs was allow for the physical reduction of the CO2 emission directly when we capture and inject it into a permanent storage underneath the geological site that has been identified and suitable as a storage site. CCS is especially important for the hard to abate industries where it is unavoidable that the CO2 will be emitted in the process of producing the product itself. Examples of some of these hard to abate industries include the steel manufacturing plant, the cement plant, the power plant, petrochemical plant, as well as oil and gas, and to a certain extent, the later generation of a cleaner energy do require CCS in order for us to produce it, such as the blue hydrogen, blue ammonia, as well as the biomass energy. As per International Energy Agency, IEA report, CCUS is projected to contribute to physical reduction of CO2 in circa of 15 to 20 gigaton cumulative throughout the years between 2030 to 2050. The next relevant question is, how is the process of CCS? The illustration here is the generic process flow and variation to the whole flow may happen to suit the industry source as well as the location of where the plant and the capture of the CO2 is happening. So if we look at the illustration here, the industrial emitters will have either to do a modification or retrofitting at their plant together to separate as well as to capture the CO2 prior to the further treatment for it to be sent to the storage site. Once it has been gathered and captured, the uh, emitters or the plant will require an infrastructure for us to transport the CO2 to the onshore gathering terminal. This infrastructure can be a pipeline if the distance of the plant or the emitters is nearby to the onshore terminal, or it can also be extended to have a long haul shipping for us to transport the liquefied CO2 to the onshore terminal. Given that in Malaysia, we have seen that a lot of the industries are located over at the west coast of Malaysia, and the storage site is potentially to be on the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia, we also see that the short haul vessel might also be a solution for us to transport those gathered CO2 from the west coast of Peninsula Malaysia to the east part of the Peninsula Malaysia. Once it's been gathered at the onshore terminal, we just need to do a bit of a treatment for us to match the pressure and temperature for us to send the liquefied CO2 to the geological storage site. Right now, with the technical know-how that Petronas have, we have identified a few potential geological sites that meet the criteria of the sealant 
as well as the containment for us to permanently store the CO2. Um, well, I've always been asked whether are we going to produce back the CO2 later on for some usage like a converted or a derived CO2 product? Well, at this juncture, uh, the converted or the derived CO2 product is sort of have a very small market segment. And the process to produce such utilization product is still very high that it makes not economical for us to pursue uh, into those segments at this juncture unless there is an innovative technology that has been matured and levelize the cost to produce such product. However, even if we are able to monetize and levelize the cost to produce, there's still abundance of CO2 that we can uh, get from even the onshore terminal, onshore gathering terminal for us to use for the derived CO2 product. Now, uh, zooming in into Petronas uh, CCS, we have been deploying the technology since 2009 when we developed the capture technology when we developed our Tanga Barat gas field. However, for the storage, although we have been performing the study of the geological site early, earlier, as early as 2007, we are only embarking into developing it recently. I just want to bring a bit why Petronas is adopting CCS. Aligning our effort towards just, just energy transition and our NZCE pledge declared in 2020, we recognize two principles that are critical. The first one, continuous and stable energy supply are still critical for Malaysia population and economy. Hence, while the cleaner energy supply is stabilized and become affordable, reach its, level, uh, reach its levelization, the interim solution of a cleaner fuel for energy generally will be shifted to gas. Uh, there will be lesser and lesser of usage of oil as we move forward towards the energy transition. In Malaysia, there are still gas fields that can be developed and produced. We have a total of 23 TCF that can be, be monetized. However, majority of these gas fields are with high CO2 contents. Hence, moving forward, in 2020, we have decided that any high CO2 gas field that economically viable for us to produce need to have the scheme of carbon capture and storage for us to address the emission of the CO2. This will ensure that Petronas is sustaining the supply of the gas in Malaysia while avoiding as much as possible the release of the CO2. If we monetize the whole 23, TCF of gas that we have right now, we are looking at about having about 1.1 billion tonne CO2 release. Hence why we need to do the CCS inside each of the development. For upstream, currently, we have two schemes uh, for the development, including the CCS. The first one is actually to have the facilities, the capture as well as the processing of the gas as well as the CO2 to be offshore. We have done that in a few of our platform offshore. Although there is a limitation in terms of the footprint for us to do it offshore, the technology that can be deployed offshore for the capture and the separation of the CO2, namely membrane, is already been in a proven track record for us to deploy. The second scheme is actually having onshore removal facilities, onshore capture facilities. This one, you have a bit more flexibility in terms of the footprint and a lot more technology can be deployed here. For example, absorption and adsorption. Although we have these two schemes in terms of the capture and the separation, the end of the uh, injection will still need to go to the geological side offshore. Hence why uh, we need to do a careful evaluation when we take the uh, study to monetize any of the uh, high CO2 gas field. Okay. Going into Kasawari, Kasawari field 
is a gas field offshore of Sarawak. It contains about 25% CO2. The total gas volume that can be produced from Kasawari is estimated at about 4.5 TCF. That is about equivalent to about 760 million barrels of oil. With, if, we might, if we produce the whole 4.5, we are looking at about having to handle one TCF of CO2. We proceed with ascension of Kasawari in 2019 after the evaluation and striking the balance between having it CC heads as well as maintaining the supply for our Malaysia LNG as well as Sarawak domestic supply. The capacity of production from Kasawari, we are looking at about 900 million scarf per day and that, if I can put it into a quantum that can be appreciated, is about generating 58 cargo of MLNG on a yearly basis. The capture is being done at Kasawari Central Processing Platform. This is the heaviest and the biggest offshore structure in Malaysia so far amounting to about 44,000 tonnes of steel in making the CPP. Currently, as of noon today, the CPP is already on a barge, heading and, and it will be leaving the key site soon uh, to be installed offshore. After that, we are targeting to have the hookup and commissioning for the Kasawari field itself, and the production is targeted to be early next year. As for the storage site, we have already taken sanction late last year. The engineering work is currently being done and the construction work, the early construction work is also being done currently and we are looking at about the same size of facilities or slightly lower in terms of the tonnage for us to do the injection. This is because once the CO2 is being separated, it needs to be pressured up for us to send it offshore and overcome the reservoir pressure for it to be injected and permanently stored at offshore. The identified depleted field for the storage of the CO2 coming from Kasawari is named M1. It is about 130 kilometers away from Kasawari itself. And here, we are transporting the CO2 via a pipeline. The target injection uh, into the storage site will be end of 2025, early 2026. Again, by doing the CCS, we are able to address about 76 million ton CO2 equivalent from being released to the atmosphere. That is Petronas uh, first CCS, complete CCS project and it's a significant milestone for us because in the region, we are the leading uh, in terms of doing a CCS for oil, oil and gas industries. I think um, just to echo or rather it's more of rising to a challenge uh, of Yang Berhormat Menteri Ekonomi, uh, Rafizi Ramli about being ambitious just now, during our study, we have identified a potential of storage site of about 2.4 billion ton. That volume is actually sufficient not only for us to offer for the industry in Malaysia, but also we foresee that it can be also offered to the regional hard to abate industries. Hence, we are setting ourselves for a stretch target for us to join together uh, with Malaysia Industries to uh, realise the NETR that has been launched uh, this afternoon. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Puan Norayan.